Hey, sports card collectors and investors. I hope everyone is having a great Tuesday. We are coming up through the holiday week here. And like I said, I'm not going to have videos on Thursday or Friday this week. We're going to be spending some time with the family, so going to be a little bit more low-key. But I do want to have videos. I, I should have a video coming out today or tomorrow. Um, and, to, and tomorrow we'll see how it goes, but should have, have videos leading up to Thanksgiving. But first, um, please subscribe if you have not already. If you are new to the channel, we typically come out with daily videos or, or average out every day. And so if you really enjoy that collectible sports cards type content, you have come to the right place. Today I'm excited to talk about football. We are getting through football season. I'm a huge New Orleans Saints fan, so I'm very happy right now with how things are going. It's kind of shaping up now. Granted, you know, we still have a long way to go. The Saints are the number one seed in the NFC, in the NFC, period. Uh, the Packers lost and the Bucks fell to the Rams. So we're kind of holding serve here in the division. And then also in the NFC, there is only a one bye week. Only the, the number one seed is the only team that gets a bye this year because we've added a seventh team to the playoffs in each conference. And so the number one seed is huge to get that first round buy. If you're the number two seed, you don't get a buy. That's something that's different from years past. So, um, you know, I'm excited that the Saints are kind of holding steady, especially considering Breeze has 11 fractured ribs. He's down uh, for a significant amount of time, I think. Um, and Taysom Hill actually looked pretty good on Sunday. So we'll see how that carries through as he continues to be the starter. All right, today we're going to focus on the rookie quarterbacks and their cards. And a lot of this, look, if you follow my show, you know I'm a big kind of open discussion type guy. I like to just open up the discussion on these things, get with you guys on the comments to get your feedback. Um, and so what I want to talk about are the three quarterbacks that came out of this draft class that have really kind of, um, you know, gotten some playing time. We've gotten to see a little bit more of them. Um, and I'm talking about Justin Herbert, Tua, and Joe Burrow. Um, we also have prison products that are coming out for football. They're, to me, they look great. Some people don't like them. Some people are not crazy about the design. I like the design. I think prison football is going to be awesome. I do. I don't know if I'm going to be buying boxes or packs or anything like that. I probably won't be unless there's just some big drop in price, which I don't really see happening. Um, but I just love the look of that product. And so certainly we'll be looking at buying singles. Probably not right out of the gate, most likely in the off season is when I'll be looking at, at buying singles. I'm going to guess probably in March time frame is when I'll be looking harder at, at Prism football cards, but we'll, we'll see how it goes. Um, but I'm going to first talk about Justin Herbert. So for me, he's he's a guy that we didn't really know kind of coming in. You saw a lot of the, a lot of the physical attributes that you want out of a QB. He's got a big arm. Um, the, the knock on him was kind of he's more of a quiet guy, maybe a little bit more introverted. So it, can he be a leader in the locker room? Can he lead a team? And he's really proven as a rookie that that he can. I mean, now, look, the Chargers have lost a bunch of close games, um, you know, been on the wrong end of games. But look, that's the NFL. That's kind of the parody of the NFL. There's there's a tiny little talent gap between these teams. Most of the games are decided by seven points or less, typically never a blowout. You know, so it's one of those things where, you know, it's just, it, it, he's just got to find his way. They've also had a lot of injuries. Uh, the Chargers, Derwin James is out, who's a big, big player for them on defense. Um, you know, so he doesn't have tons of, tons of help. He's got a decent team. The Chargers are not a bad team overall, but he's, you know, they, they need to kind of still work with him to find him a little bit, you know, I think some more weapons and just, you know, give him more time in the pocket, etc. So, Herbert is a guy that I really like long term. When we say long term, you know, three to five years plus, you know, as far as buying cards. I'm not buying his cards right now. I almost bought uh, some of his cards at a card show a couple months ago, some mosaic cards, but I just, I'm trying to stay patient because as more and more sets come out, as Prism comes out, as Optic comes out, I do think that mosaic will kind of come down in price to some degree. It might not, but um, I think that those, those players. We'll be able we'll be able to get those, and then also I'm looking at at graded options as well, and we just don't have enough graded options for me right now. They're going to be expensive because it's, there's a limited supply. Need to see what those population reports look like. So the graded cards for Herbert and a lot of these guys, I'm probably not buying for another six, nine months, twelve months out, just because I want to see kind of how the pricing goes, etc. And I wouldn't buy right this second. I'd probably wait until we get into an off season uh, to go after him. But I really like Justin Herbert long term. I think that he's shown something. Now, look, 
the NFL, the one thing about the NFL, too, that you have to take into account is defenses are really good at game planning against QBs once they've got some film on them. And so the rookie QBs, they always kind of have this benefit of the other team doesn't really know exactly what they're going to get. You know, they don't know exactly how you're going to play. They don't know your tendencies yet. But NFL defenses adapt very quickly. And so the big thing with these guys is going to be how do they move from year one to year two to year three to year four and beyond. Uh, one guy that surprised me, honestly, Kyler Murray, in that he has actually looked better. Now he's got he's got arguably the best receiver in the league outside of Michael Thomas. I'm a Saints fan, but he's got Hopkins there now, which you saw the catch that Hopkins made, you know, what, last week, a couple weeks ago. It's big having that guy on your team. So he's got weapons around him, Kyler Murray. Um, but I honestly thought that Kyler Murray might slump just because of the division being so tough there in the NFC West, and he hasn't. He's really played. He's played well. Um, and, and I'll be honest, I was kind of surprised by that just because once teams are able to game plan against you, a lot of times there's a sophomore slump. We saw it with Baker Mayfield. You know, you see it with a lot of QBs. Um, you know, RG3 was rookie of the year, and then he's injured, he's out, and, and then, uh, you know, it can change in a hurry. You know, so I'm optimistic on these guys. They have to show a few years of kind of really establishing themselves. And then we look around the league, and it's like, there's some quarterbacks that you're looking at them, and it's like, is it time for a change for some of these teams that have good quarterbacks? A couple of examples, Matt Stafford and Matt Ryan. You know, Matt Stafford, I believe, is in his 12th season now. You know, and Matt Ryan, he's another guy. He's been around for 10, 10 plus years. And these guys, they're good, serviceable starters, but they're just not getting it done. I mean, Matt Ryan, since they were in the Super Bowl, is hasn't really done a whole lot of anything. I don't know if that game just, you know, broke the Falcons, but it's been it's been not good since since that game. And I like to throw that up just because I'm a Saints fan, so it's the 28-3 thing. So sorry for all you Falcons fans out there that might be watching. Um, but, you know, there's guys in the league, I guess is my point, is is it time to move on? You know, are these guys kind of, you know, just just not going to be able to get over the hump? And how much of a, how long of a leash do these guys get? Stafford's been a, a good QB when he's able to play. He's, it seems like he's always banged up. These are just a couple of examples of guys like that that have been in the league for about 10 years, starters, considered to be good QBs, but, you know, is it time to move on from these guys? I'm curious to hear your thoughts, too, you know, or is it just the team that they put around them? Is it the organization that's not doing their part, you know, getting them a defense, you know, et cetera, et cetera. But curious to hear your thoughts there. Herbert, I like Herbert. The one thing I really like about him is he can get the ball downfield on the run. He's accurate downfield. So it's not that he can just launch it. You know, Josh Allen can launch it too. The big difference between Josh Allen this year from from last is that he's accurate throwing the ball downfield now, which is something that he was not. He was not um, up until this season. That's really what's made a big difference in his play is, you know, look, he's got a great defense there in Buffalo, but also he's been very accurate throwing the football, especially downfield, and that makes a huge difference. So Herbert's shown a lot there to where he's getting the ball 30, 40, 50 yards downfield on the numbers, and that that's that's big. Tua. Ugh, I don't know how to feel about Tua. I, I read I thought that he was injured, and that's the reason why he was he was not in the game last week. The Dolphins, I believe, were riding a five-game winning streak. Another YouTuber that I, I like to collaborate with, uh, Flipping Steve, is going to have opinions on this as well. Steve, feel free to feel free to throw it in uh, where you see it. But from what I read, he was benched for Fitzpatrick because he just wasn't having a good game. Um, he was benched in the fourth quarter. I don't know if I really like that move by Flores, just because you know a lot of times you just have to let these rookies figure it out. Can, can they come back from behind? Can they can they resurrect it? If they're always kind of worried mentally about being pulled in the fourth quarter especially when you're riding a winning streak like that. I don't know if that's good for the mental psyche. I understand you're trying to keep accountability with your players, but I just don't know about that, um, especially when a rookie QB, he's trying to learn the NFL, he's trying to get comfort within the organization. Yes, you don't want them to be arrogant and think that they can do no wrong because they were the first round pick. At the same time, you know, I think that there's got to be some sort of a balance there, and I'm not sure that was a great move uh, by Flores. I think that they just need to, if they're going with Tua, they gotta they got to ride it out. I know this was a big issue with Troy Aikman early in his career. He talked about it. If you look back, there's a great like uh, ESPN 30 for 30 or Football Life on Aikman. But if you watch that, it talks about Aikman the first two seasons did not look like 
Hall of Fame Troy Aikman, and a lot of it was he wasn't on a good team. His rookie year, they were 1-15, and but a lot of it was the the coaches were not in fit they they would not commit to him he didn't feel like he had that commitment and Jimmy Johnson was the guy that came in and was like you're my guy I think it was between him and Steve Walsh another QB uh, uh, Cowboys QB good QB very serviceable veteran it's always the are we going with the veteran or the rookie you know it's same with right now with Fitzpatrick and Tua and for Aikman what got him over the hump obviously they had a great draft class with Emmett Smith etc great offensive line that got them over the hump. But it was the confidence as well that Aikman um, had the team's blessing, and that's what, what got him over the hump. So for Tua, I'm not really sure, you know, with him kind of, you know, I, I don't know if the organization really did the right thing there, uh, but interested in, in hearing your thoughts. For Tua cards, I'm not as high on him just because of the injury history. I just need to see more. If I'm looking at the three, I'm more looking at Burrow. Herbert and then Tua if I was kind of ranking those right now as far as where I'm looking to buy. Others would disagree with me, especially with with the injury to Joe Burrow. Let's get into Joe Burrow. So the one thing is, and I was paying close attention to this because I wanted to know, is this kind of like a a regular old ACL tear where it's like eight to 10 months, 11 months, and then you're back in the swing, kind of like, you know, Tom Brady had that injury, what, six, seven years ago, week one, and he was back, you know, the following year fairly common nowadays ACL tears that they're able to work on them and get it and get it fit cleaned up pretty quickly um, but I, I read that Burrow had additional damage is this more of like a Teddy Bridgewater Alex Smith injury that's going to keep him out for an extended period is he going to not only miss this season but also next you know I am a big believer in Joe Burrow long term even if that it takes him two years to get back into it I just like the kid I like his competitiveness he has no offensive line in Cincinnati, and they just they let him just kind of get buried back there. I think he got hit like an NFL record 72 times or something. I read. The point is, is that they never really gave him a chance, you know. To and and, he, and the thing that's amazing is he was playing well. He was actually putting up good numbers behind that line. So uh, with Burrow, I'm paying very close attention to his rookie card, specifically his well, no, Mosaic Prism Optic are the three that I'll be watching over the next six months as they release. I'm not sure when Optic Football comes out. Prism Football obviously coming out. I don't think that Burrow prices are going to just bottom out because there's a bunch of guys like me that are waiting that are like, okay, well, how low can they go? Because I'm I'm a buyer. Um, I, I I'm a buyer at the right price, and that's where the thing that I, I want to pay attention to with his stuff is. How far down is it going to go? And to be honest, I don't think it's going to go down a whole lot. I think it'll come down some, especially as money moves from football cards to basketball cards to other, you know, UFC cards or whatever is hot at the time. Um, I do think money will move around and that might open up opportunities. But are Joe Burrow rookies going to be a dollar? No, they're not going to be because there's plenty of plenty of people. You go into Facebook groups, everyone's trying to buy them. Everybody's trying to buy them. So, um, you know, if, as long as you're okay, I think, with kind of a two-year, three-hold, long-term, two- or three-year-plus hold for Joe Burrow, then great. If, if it's something where you're trying to do quick flips on, then I don't I don't know if that's maybe the right player uh, to, to do it with. But um, I like Burrow, though. I think he's got a really bright future. I think he'll come back strong. I think the Bengals will figure it out and get him a line. Um, and if they don't, he'll probably move on somewhere else. But I, I just like that kid overall. So, guys, I'm kind of, it's a little long winded this video, but I love talking football. Um, so, let me know your thoughts on this. Um, I, I'd like to hear kind of just your strategy with these three QBs. And are you buying their cards now? Or are you buying them later? What are your thoughts on it? Let me know. If you have not subscribed yet, guys, please do so. It's a fun channel. We're having a blast here, and we're going to keep on making consistent content for you. Take care and have a great holiday week.